Hi. I want today I want to explain a um, DC chopper or a two quadrant DC DC converter. So uh, before doing that, you need to generate the PWM. So how can you generate PWM? The first method is to have a triangular wave plus a, a DC control voltage plus a comparator. So let's use this. So we have a triangular waveform. The parameters are the switching frequency, for instance, 1 kHz, and also the duty cycle, for instance, 0 0.5. Uh, to generate a triangular waveform, let's just use 3.3 .3 as a amplitude voltage, delay 0, rise, 1 over 2 times fs this should be this should be quite enough and 1 nanosecond as on period now uh, the period is 1 over fs of course and uh, before going on let's immediately verify that this is a, a triangular waveform let's just run for uh, uh, three periods because I, I don't want to modify each time uh, I don't want to, to modify each time, so let's just write 3 over fs. Oh, okay. We see 3 triangular waveform as we planned. Now, if you modify, if you um, modify this or increase the, um, the switching frequency, you see that the simulation has not changed because I wrote a, a transient for 3 periods. If you set it right uh, 10 micro, you just see one period, but if you put, uh, uh, if you want to increase uh, the switching frequency, you're gonna s you're gonna see also different periods. So in order to avoid also to zoom again, zoom again, zoom again each time, just write uh, on the transient uh, the number of periods that you want n over fs. Let's say that we want to see um, we want to see three periods, the paramen is equal to three, and you just see three periods. And this is independent on the frequency that you're going to put. So let's just put one kilohertz. Honestly, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any difference for now. And let's just use uh, a control voltage, a DC control voltage. So let's just call this three, and let's call this, um, CTR of one volt. So you are, now you have the triangular waveform and the control voltage. If this voltage is higher than the, the triangular waveform, it should generate one. Zero otherwise. You can do this uh, by using a behavioral voltage, just writing here BV. Oh, sorry. It, uh, what, it won't work unless you use the, the behavioral voltage instead. So, um, if, if V triangular is higher than V control, generate 1 or 0. Uh, maybe the, the, the syntax is, uh, uh, maybe the, the syntax is wrong. Um, in fact, it is wrong. Uh, the disadvantage of this is that if you mess up with the syntax here, it uh, won't work. Uh, maybe it, it was uh, v equal to. I'm trying to remember. Okay, this should be now. This should be good, and you see that the result is uh, exactly as we planned. So, we have the triangular waveform, the control voltage, and you have a b regular comparator. Now, if you use a real comparator, just put the universal op amp right there. The um, I don't know. Uh, maybe just put uh, uh, three dot three volts also here. Now, if you put uh, the triangular wave on one side and the control wave on one side, 
basically you're gonna have the same result oh now this is fantastic it uh, doesn't work maybe because I I, op I opened the wrong symbol but anyway um, universal pump 2 control voltage triangular waveform let's run the simulation and as you can see the output voltage is exactly as is uh, oh sorry <laughs> it's the opposite is exactly the opposite but anyway uh, so you can generate the the, the the pwm in this way with a comparator or a behavioral comparator and if you wanted to generate the complementary pwm just put again the same um, the, the, the same but with the the other just with the other sign here and you see that you're gonna have two complementary waveform to drive a synchronous configuration or you can just uh, generate these two waveform so the second the second uh, so the second uh, um, the second method is to generate this pwm technique with uh, the square waveform so let's write second method square waveform uh, what is the, the advantage of uh, of uh, generating the PWM with a square waveform, basically you can also. It is easier to uh, to control with the time and the two duty cycle because uh, if you put one, you don't actually know how much of your you, you should uh, you should put the voltage based on the amplitude of of your of your um, of your triangular waveform. So, for instance, uh, if you have three dot three over uh, over over k uh, k will basically will, will be basically your duty cycle i think let me just verify so if you put uh, k equal to um to two you should have a duty cycle of 50 percent yes that's basically it so if you put uh, a uh, duty cycle equal k equal to 4 you should have 0 dot 50 percent yes yes basically basically that's it this is a, tw a 25 percent duty cycle so basically that's it uh, if you wanted to have a, a easier a, a, a easy way to generate the pwm just use a square waveform instead choose square waveform so use a voltage here and let's just use a pulse 0 3.3 now if this is the low side just put d over fs other zero otherwise one nano one nano and t on is d over fs and ah sorry this is this is the one minus d by the way because this is the low side and the period will be 1 over fs so this is the, the low side and the high side is the same but without the delay and this d here so let's generate let's run the simulation and oh uh, sorry low side low side make an overdefined parallel and uh, it won't work so the low side is like this and the high side like this as you can see i generated uh, efficiently two complementary square waveform and uh, um, with the frequency which needed the advantage of this is that you can also decide the rise time freely and you can also put a dead time dot param dead equal to 10 nanoseconds and insert easily in your waveform so the tion will be always the same minus dead and the same for the other minus dead now let's run again the simulation and uh, 
Okay, there is a bit, of, a little bit of that time, as you can see. And this will avoid the spikes, will avoid the short circuits, so it is quite useful to generate the square waveform in this way instead. But as you prefer, as you prefer, you can also use this one. The advantage of using this technique is that when you have to design uh, an inverter, you always you always have a triangular waveform, but instead of having a constant control voltage, you have a sine control voltage. And so uh, this is basically the uh, you, you have uh, no way to generate the, the, the PWM carrier voltage unless with this. Uh, when I will explain the inverter, I will show you how to do it. So now that we have also our low side and high side, let's just use this uh, to generate a, a DC DC converter. I will just show you the result because uh, I think that this video is uh, long enough. So we just you, I will just show you the result. So basically here I used uh, a two complementary switches, and I used. Uh, I will show you. I used uh, the high side. As as I said, it's always better to use uh, as a transient. Uh, Instead of having a time, let's just use uh, 3 over fs, so that we don't have to wait. Uh, and uh, as a starting time, let's just script uh, 1m. Uh, it is not chronological in order. Okay, don't care. So I just want to, do, want to show you the waveform. So this is the high side waveform. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, of course, uh, if you are if you're gonna use this as a high side, you don't you don't need to ground it uh, as I explained in other in, in other videos. So this will be uh, B minus, for instance, because in high side that does not have a ground. So uh, the high side voltage is this, and the low side voltage is this with a dead time of 100 nanoseconds. I used this two PWM with a with two switches and ideal diodes. So as I explained in the other video, when the the motor is rotating like this, the current will be flowing in this way. So now the, the inductor current is still rising, so let's just put uh, seriously this time 5 milli and 4 milli, so that we just see 1 milli without uh, wasting any time in zooming. Okay, it's still rising. To my dismay, it's still, it is still rising. But by the way, this is the voltage that is that the motor is gonna see. And uh, as you can see, the motor is seeing a DC, um, a non-DC voltage. But he will see a he will he will see uh, the the LMS voltage, and uh, it will it will it will increase depending on the duty cycle that you're gonna give, that you're gonna give. So basically, if you increase the duty cycle, zero point five, the motor voltage will increase as well, and so will be also the current. This is still this is still rising. <laughs> this is still rising, by the way. And uh, so this is uh, basically a DC chopper.